All right, so our setup is going to be, we're going to walk. We're going to have our character walking. And last time, the character was walking on a plain white background. You couldn't really get a sense that the character was actually walking. So we're going to add a background in order to actually make it look like the character is walking somewhere. Um, our setup is you're either going to use your animation from last time, or you could go to the network folder. You can go to the web design folder. Inside the web design folder, CIS 126, inside of topic 2 handouts, you can copy, don't double click it, but you can copy my walk cycle uh, from uh, Monday. Copy that to your desktop. I'm going to copy it to my desktop and then put today's date on it, and then I'll open it. So if you want to use uh, my starting point, uh, you can do so. So I copy that to my desktop. I'm going to put today's date on it. I like to make a file with uh, the, the new date. That way I can kind of see uh, the old version uh, versus the previous version, or the new version versus the previous version. So from the network folder, you want to copy my file or use your file. One thing that I will say about your file, your animation that I noticed, it, um, it, it seems to have perhaps two extra frames if you if you followed the uh, you know the if you if you traced it like the example like I did as well we drew all of these frames and I kind of felt that it, there was a little bit of a like a hiccup uh, hard to describe but I could kind of see that like there was a quick frame that looked a little weird uh, and that's because uh, the animation has two extra frames that it didn't quite need, perhaps. I've already removed those two extra frames on my example, but on yours, you still have those frames. What I'm saying is that uh, here in the example, you've got the, you've got the spread legs, and then one, two, standing, one, two, this has got spread legs right here, like this, but with opposite legs. And with such a basic stick figure, like we have, it doesn't matter. But we've got, then we drew these two here. Uh, bending leg, bending leg, straight leg should come next. Bending leg, bending leg, straight leg. So right here, we would need to draw uh, the next one, which is the straight leg. So that's why I felt the animation was a little weird. Those two extra frames there, we really only need up to here. Because you've got uh, spread legs, two frames, straight legs, bent legs, straight leg. So if you're using your own animation, it looks like it'll be a little bit smoother if you uh, remove the two frames that are at your end. See right here, I already did it on my example. Mine goes up to 12 frames right here. 12 frames. There's the one, two, three, four, five, six key frames. Remember, a key frame is wherever you've, you've got a new drawing. A frame is, this is continuing that frame for two frames. This one is the, is the tracing example. One key frame, and the rest are frames. Uh, so, you could right-click to remove those extra ones. I think it goes up to 16, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So if you traced exactly that up there, you, you probably have up to 16, and you, don't, you probably don't need them, just because looking at how it was drawn. So I've removed those extra ones. Just select them, uh, you know, click them, right-click, and then remove, just so that you've got up to 12. Let me just show you how you would do that just in case. If you had something like this, I don't need these last two ones. What you could do is click and drag to select, and then right click, delete frames, remove frames. Uh, one th weird thing about selecting in the timeline here is if I click one time on that keyframe, I want to make 
making a selection. If I click one time and then click to drag, I'm actually going to move it. Be careful about that. So I click it, I try to click to drag to select, it's going to move that one. It's just these quirks to get used to. So see if I click and drag and I'm trying to make a selection, but it, I'm actually, whoops, I'm moving it. It's super weird, so you undo that. The way I would do it is click somewhere else and then click outside, click and drag like that. And once those are selected, you can right click, remove frames. This of course doesn't matter if you're using my animation. I've got mine ready. It goes to 12 frames. But if you're using yours with those extra two keyframes, with those extra four frames, you might want to remove it. Yes. Um, I noticed that on the 11th frame and the first frame, it's exactly the same. So I don't think you need the 11th frame also. Possibly, depending if you drew it uh, the same way. So, um, in our case, let me double check on it. So, first frame and 11th frame. It's slightly different. It's the same pose, yes, but it's a little bit different enough. You could still remove it, however, so good point. You guys see that? If we look on frame one, it's the spread legs. If you then go to frame 11, it's the spread legs again, but it's technically the left leg. Uh, so it's still spread, but it's slightly drawn differently, and it's the left leg. If you do the control enter to see it, if you do the control enter to see it in the animation here, it seems to be fine. We, we could remove that, just to try it, I'm going to remove that last 11th frame just to see what it looks like. Sometimes we do need to do that. If the frames are exactly the same when they loop, there will be an odd sort of jump. So let me give that a try with without that extra one. Oh, I have to remove the other frames as well. Just a moment. Because I'm just curious as well. So it feels slightly faster because there isn't that extra frame. And that's perfectly fine. I remove the, the 11th and 12th frames. Looks a little faster because the point of it is the character is so simple. We have a position where the legs are spread kind of twice, but slightly drawn differently because I did it by hand. In any event, I'm going to leave it as is, but if you'd like to remove those ones, you can. And then go to File, Revert. Okay, guys right there in the corner, Angie and uh, JT, please a little, a little quieter, please. So uh, I'm going to keep it with those frames as, as my file. And I'm also going to simplify this animation a bit because I have the Walk 4 layer, and I've got Example layer, Walk 3, Walk 2, Walk 1. I've got a version of the project already saved with all of these layers that I can refer back to. But this version, I'm only going to keep the one walk for. So I want to delete each of these extra other layers. You can just select it and click the trash can. I'm going to simplify that just to call it walk. And then I'll save. You could do a save as to do a different file name. So um, our setup here is one of the great uh, reasons why we would use software like Animate to draw or to animate is because it will let us do a lot of shortcuts. We can do things very quickly. We can do things repetitively. And that's sometimes part of animation, repetition. So for example here, this walk cycle would be nice if we can sort of uh, group it together so it can be easily looped. We'll do that with a new concept called symbols. So um, we haven't looked at this quite yet, but go over to your uh, panel that says library. 
you should see a panel that says library somewhere if you can't find it you can always go up to the window menu you'll see library which is different than the CC libraries CC libraries is supposed to be you save something to this library and you'll be able to use it in animate in Photoshop in After Effects you're able to transfer an asset from a from one software to the other we don't need that we need the library which is like a holding pen a holding spot uh, where I can keep elements in this file uh, for me to reuse this animation I might want to reuse it when we get more complex we're gonna make an animated movie we're gonna have scenes in a regular movie a scene is like the cameras recording us right here and then the scene changes where now we're out in the park and the scene changes and then we're at the beach we have that in animate as well we can change scenes you know concepts of what's happening in the movie so if I want to reuse that same walk the guy is walking in the city in one scene then the guy's walking on the beach in another scene I may not want to redraw that whole animation of walking I want to reuse the animation of walking and that's going to be a symbol in the library there's already something in the library when we imported the tracing image it put it into the library so even though I deleted it in the layers it's still in the library if I still want to use it uh, I don't want to use it at the moment but what I could do is drag it right into my stage and I've got another copy of it don't do that but this is the, pu the purpose of the library. I'm going to hold assets. I can hold simple drawings. I can hold animations. I can hold music. We'll probably get to music today as well a little bit. I can hold all these assets. To make a, a library item on the bottom of the library panel, you will see here, make a new symbol, make a folder to organize my symbols. Maybe I'll have seven music files, so I'll make a folder and put them all in there. Info about your current item and delete an item. Let's click that to create a new symbol, the first icon. When you click that one time, it pops up, create new symbol. It needs a name. We'll call it Walk Cycle. I'm going to avoid capital letters. Spaces, keep it very simple. Walk cycle, that's a CL, not a D. The font is weird. Walk cycle. If we were going to put it in folders, we could, but we'll leave it alone. And then we've got type movie clip, button, graphic. Buttons kind of make sense. We'll be able to create things that we can click on to do something later when we get to the programming aspect. So we've got movie clip and we've got graphic. For the moment, to keep it simple, just choose graphic. And graphic is kind of misnamed because a graphic can also include an animation. All of these frames that we've animated, I want to bundle them together in a walk cycle graphic symbol so that I can reuse that symbol multiple times. So we give it a name, we give it a type, graphic, click OK. What happens is the screen changes, we, it looks like we lost everything, but not really, we're in the symbol, you can see here. We're editing the walk cycle symbol, which is inside of scene one. We had always a scene one. This is like a separate timeline, it's its own world where I can animate. But what I want to do is copy and paste, or maybe cut and paste, the animation frames I've already made. I want to cut them or paste or copy them into this symbol. We're editing this symbol. We need to get out of the symbol. So you can press the back button here. Now we're on the main scene one. So you see in the library, we've got a walk cycle symbol of a graphic. We're back on scene one. 
all of these frames here, I want to move them into the walk cycle symbol. The way we can do that is if you click on the icon next to the name of the layer, click once, that selects all of the frames. Right click cut frames. No, uh, right click on the frames and then cut frames. You know what, actually we could do that too. We can just cut the whole layer. That's two ways to do it. Yeah, let's try that. If you click on the layer and then you right click on the layer, you can do cut layer. And it'll do the same thing. And then we'll double click on the walk cycle uh, symbol. Right click on layer one in the new symbol and then paste layers. all of those frames, 12 frames, from the main timeline, C1, we moved them, we cut them into the walk cycle symbol, or the walk layer. It even comes with the name of the layer. It comes with all of the frames. We have left over layer 1 in the symbol, layer 1 empty, it's nothing. We can delete it. It shouldn't affect anything, but I'm going to delete layer one in the walk cycle symbol. And I'll go back to scene one. I'm going to save that. So the concept is I made a new symbol, it was empty. I then cut the whole I cut the layer with my animation and pasted it into the symbol. So now that exists in a symbol. Layer 1 is empty. So now what we'll do is we'll drag this symbol from the library back onto the stage. So all of the steps of walking are grouped, so to speak, in this symbol. And now we've got it. Here. Uh, that took 12 frames to animate. We also need to display at least 12 frames here for it to actually animate. Uh, let's actually add uh, <coughs> up to 25 frames. Let's go to frame 25 <coughs> and then right click insert frame. We were doing F. Seven to create a blank keyframe. We need to then remember F5 to insert a frame. What this is doing is the symbol starts to be visible on frame one and will continue to be visible until frame 25, which is just about one second of animation, 24 frames per second, one second. The symbol will be visible for this amount of time. One sec. If I do control enter, it animates. Well, that was a lot of effort for the exact same thing. But here's one of the big differences for doing this. I can drag another copy of the guy over, test that. And this will then have two exact animations, two guys walking side by side, if my thing doesn't crash. There we go. Well, I can drag another copy and put another guy. And now we've got a march going on. So I drag three instances of the symbol. There's one symbol, but three instances. And I've got three copies of the animation. I like the 
I like that. It was like, wheel, 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 what are we here <laughs> You should put that in the text. Wheel, wheel, wheel. <laughs> what is what does that come from? Like a Buzz Bunny cartoon? It's um yeah, I know. It was a um I I remember because Doug did it. Uh, okay. Doug, it was that like, you know that green weird looking bully and he had like uh, yeah, and he had like two of the friends with him and they were like he was like, Well, 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 what do we have here? Mm. Doug funny. <laughs> Classic. Classic Doug. So, look at this. We are quickly able to uh, create multiple instances with the one animation. This is, again, why drawing and animating in a software like this is so powerful. Now, it was a lot of steps. Let's pause here. Anyone need a little help? Did anyone need to get this kind of set up here? So if at this point it worked very good, anyone uh, need a little help? I think we've got everyone animate. All right, so uh, the point of this, this is the power of animate and uh, software like this. Now we can make symbols, then we can make instances. At the moment, 
the uh, all of the three guys are, are walking. That's nice. Well, the reason I'm I'm setting this up is because I just wanted to walk. I wanted to loop, and then I want to add a background. Right now, I get the illusion that they're walking, but to further enhance the illusion, it'd be good if there's a background. Because if I walk from here to the other side of the room, you know, there's the background behind me, so it'd be nice to do this as well for this animation. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm only gonna leave uh, one instance of the guy in the center. And then I want a um, I want to lock this layer. I'm going to have the the guy walking on layer 1, so I guess I'll call him walker. Lock the layer, make a new layer, call it background. And I want to change the order so that the background is below the walker. Just click that one and drag it below. So layers are, are going to be very important when we animate more complexly because uh, this will be one element in front of another element. So this is like if I had two sheets of paper. One sheet of paper where I drew a background and one sheet of paper where I drew the animation one on top of the other, from top to bottom. So walkers ahead of the background. In the order there, walkers on top of the background. So in the background, what I'm going to do is very simply just draw like a, um, a very simple uh, like hills and stuff. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to get the brush tool, maybe with a different color. We're not going to get that complex. I'll just do black and brush tool. With the brush tool, I'm going to draw something like this. So here, there's just a very basic background. Um, I want the character to walk across this background. And there's a couple of ways to do it. We can either animate, or we can either move the character on the background, or we can do the classic animation technique where the background moves and the character stays in place. This is most obvious on some of those old terrible cartoons. You know, everyone loves Yogi Bear and all of that, but they had some of the worst animation in, in, in the 70s because they just used so cheaply the techniques of animation, such as uh, Yogi Bear running with only his legs moving and his hands stable, and then the background moving and moving and moving the exact same tree in the background moving over and over. Remember that. So there's a couple of ways to do that. Move the character or move the background. Let's try the way to move the background, but I'll show you a better way. Uh, if we want to move the background, that means we need some amount of background to show. I've, on purpose, at the moment, drawn very little of a background. I need to move the background and not the guy. So actually, we should draw a longer background. I'm going to zoom out more. And approximately, I'm going to draw a background that's approximately twice as long as my stage. So if I drew this much of a background, I want to draw maybe all the way over here somewhere. Just continue some hills over here somewhere. So if I keep drawing these hills over here somewhere, something like that. So I've got the big idea here is I need extra amount of length for my background to scroll my background. Because I'm going to move the background. Can you visualize that? I'm about to move the background. And therefore, I need this element to move over here. Well, to do some of this complex animation, especially with looping, we saw that we created a symbol for the walker to loop easily. We're going to need something like that for the background. Right now, our background is not animated, so it'll be simpler to turn it into a symbol than it was for the walker. We kind of work backwards. We made all the frames, then we moved them to a symbol. 
we already have the idea that we're going to move the background. So we should turn that background into a symbol first and then start to animate it. So I've drawn the background. You want to then uh, double click that background to select it. You want to select the whole piece, everything about your background. Double click it or click the icon. And then you can right click your simple background, what you drew, not the empty background, but what you drew. And we've got uh, convert to symbol that has a keyboard shortcut as well, F8. So F5 to add more frames, meaning something is visible longer. F7 to create a blank keyframe, F8 to turn something into a symbol. There's also F6, which we haven't really used yet. We'll deal, deal with that later. Convert to a symbol. We'll call this uh, hills. We'll keep it as a graphic. Got my hills drawn on its own layer. I've drawn it double the length of my stage. Selected it, turned to a symbol, give it a name, give it a type of graphic. Click OK. That whole thing is one object. On the background layer, we have frame one which is our first keyframe. I want to then move it at the end of the first uh, second, at the first 24, 24 frames. I want that to be moved over. Let's go to frame 25 in the background layer, and we'll press F6. That is the same as right-click, insert, um, uh, keyframe. Uh, this is slightly different. Notice when we do F6, it gives us another black circle. That's the same as insert keyframe. Blank keyframe would have given us a white circle, meaning there's nothing there. We're ready to add something new. Insert keyframe, or F6, copies the previous keyframe into the new frame. It's like a copy and a paste into the new frame. The reason for that is I don't want to redraw the background. I simply want to move it. So if the background started all the way to the right on frame one, on the last frame, I need to move the background to the left. And perhaps a better way would just be to use the arrow keys, shift left, to move it exactly to the left. If, if I want to move it with my mouse, it may shift up or down, which would look a little odd. So when it's selected, holding shift and arrow keys will move it really fast to the left. So I'm going to move it something like that. First frame, the background is all the way to the right. Last frame, the background is all the way to the left. The background itself is moving, the guy is stationary. And what Animate can then do for us is automatically draw all of the frames in between. We drew every frame of the walk animation, but f Animate can give us some shortcuts with some basic things like this, where I don't want to draw the background moved a little bit, and then another frame draw it a little bit, and then another frame and another frame. We can have Animate do it for us when we have a starting point and an ending point in the middle, anywhere, Right click, insert classic tween. Not motion tween, classic tween. Here we get the symbols that it says animate will automatically draw for us between our starting and ending points that we defined. It will move the background for us. And if we test it, background is 
moving, the hills, the hills are moving, the guy's walking in place, but the background is moving. Very fast, perhaps too fast. We want to slow it down. I'm not going to change the FPS. The way to slow it down is to add more frames. So if I go back to animate, right now this whole animation is taking one second. That's why it feels so fast. I want it to take two seconds. We need to do a little math here. 24 frames per second. So 24 frames is one second. We need this to be two seconds long. How many frames is that? 48. 24 per one second. I need two seconds. 2 times 24, 48. At about 50, just to round it up. So uh, the fast way to do this is if you click to select your final keyframe and drag it to 50. Now the animation of the background will take two whole seconds. It will slow down. My walker stops on frame 25. Go to the frame 50 and press F5. So the walker was going up to the first 25 frames. I need it to go all the way to the 50th frame. So click that 50th frame on the walker layer F5 to extend that. It was a little easier on the background because we were dealing with a keyframe. I just moved to the keyframe. There was no keyframe on frame 25. There was a regular frame. So I had to go to frame 50 to F5. Now this is taking longer. Longer time that something takes, the slower it looks without affecting the FPS. Now if I test it, the background doesn't look like it's going so fast. it even slower 3 seconds okay 48 i mean 24 times 3 we're dealing with 24 frames per second 24 times 3 24 times 3 72 if we want this to take 3 seconds we need to go up to frame 72 or just to round it 70 i'm going to go to frame 70 i'm going to drag the ending keyframe of the background to 70. And then I'm going to F5. So all this animation now is taking three seconds, even slower. So my first version, the first version uh, was right here, really fast. The second version, a little slower. The third version, more leisurely. I think we should do is um, make it make the background at least link with the prime previous one that way it looks exactly. it doesn't look exactly good eye right there. Everyone probably sees that. It's suddenly the background then jumps. Well this is part of that making a good animation. I didn't think of it or I didn't tell you but we didn't think of it that we perhaps should have drawn the background in a way that one point links with the other point so that when it loops around, it looks seamless. It's a classic cartoon cliche they always do. Exactly, like when uh, you know, Milky Bear is running in front of the tree and it's the same tree over and over because it was linked background. Mm -hmm. So. Um, uh, classic Milky Bear. They always <laughs> the yes. So for us, uh, we didn't think about linking the background. We'll do that in a moment. Let's pause at this point. The big idea is that we have the, the background as a symbol. It starts at a certain frame. It ends at some other frame. In between, we did right click, um, insert classic tween, and then animate for us animates it. Simply moved it. The, the classic tween wouldn't have been very 
useful for our walk cycle. It's, it's not as simple as that scrolling background. I'm going to save that. Let's pause here. Anyone need a little help? seeing the power of symbols in that we can reuse elements. Let's say I wanted to change my background. Okay, that's kind of basic. What if I actually did want to draw I, or like color it in? It's not a filled in shape, so we can't color it in. But the good news is that even though we've got this animation happening here, we can still edit the original graphic because there's a copy of the original right here. So if we try this, let's go to the library on the right side here and double click the icon of your hills. The icon, not the name. If you double click the name, it'll want you to rename it. You want to double click the icon. And that'll take you back to edit the um, that'll take you back to edit the, the original the original symbol. We're in the world of the symbol. Notice we're in the hills view back on scene one. We can now edit the, the symbol again. The, the way I want to be able to color this with green, the easiest way is that I need a closed shape. Conceptually, it's it's hills, but I need to close the shape. Lasso? What's that? Lasso? Mm, possibly, but what I'm going to do is very simply just draw 
the ending side of the shape out here somewhere, which will not be visible in my timeline. So with the brush tool, or any tool, I'm going to draw something just like this. I just need to complete the shape. This further down area here will not be visible. One thing that's kind of confusing from this view is we can't see where's the edge of my file. The whole thing is visible. We can't see the edge of the 1920 by 1080 uh, in this view. All that I wanted to do was close that shape so I can drop in a color with the paint bucket. Make sure your shape is closed. shape is closed. Uh, for mine, there must be a little gap somewhere that I can't see, but here's one quick way to fix that. With the paint bucket, I'm trying to click inside of that shape. It looks close to me, but I'm probably missing somewhere, and it's not filling in. One way to force it is, notice down here there's an option for the, once the paint bucket is selected, there's an option of a circle there that says uh, close gaps, gap size. Right now, the first option is don't close gaps meaning your shapes better be closed in order for the paint bucket to fill it in. If there's a little gap, we can select that and it'll fill it in for us. I don't know where my gap is, so I'm gonna choose close large gaps. Wherever the gap is, I'm gonna select close gap with the paint bucket tool and then that should fill in. I don't like to rely on that too much, just for expediency, I can't see where the gap is, so I'll just say wherever that gap is, close it. We edit to that very simply. I'll go back to scene one. Again, I, I didn't know how far to go out, so I made a, a background really, really big. It doesn't matter. When I, when I animate it, it's only going to show the part inside of the 'Cause it's because it's the um, it's a digital software, this will be a little bit easier to set up. I wanna select the starting piece of my background from the left and copy it to the right side of the ending piece of the animation and then kinda join them together. So what that means is I need to copy some piece over here, and paste it over here, and join them together, probably smooth them a little bit. Now, if you made an, uh, an animation going upwards, that'll be a little bit harder, because we would then need to draw it coming back down. If you made it only going straight up, it might not be as easy to do. We'll see. But on mine, I'm going to copy a little piece of the left to put on the right, on the same level. Because if I copy this piece and move it down here, it's still going to look a little off. This piece, notice how close it is to my guide over here. It should be also up here in order for it to loop. Because it starts over there, it should end over here. 
if I end it down here, it's going to be out of alignment. So uh, we're going to double click your hills in the library. I'm going to use the select tool to make a selection something like this. Notice we can only select a piece if we want. I've selected some kind of piece like this. Um, remember if we hold Alt on the keyboard and drag, it makes a copy. You need to put that copy on the right side. But before I start to move any of that, again, this should be lined up the same. If I drag this piece out over here and kind of connect it, again, it's going to be lower than this starting point. Before I move anything, I can put a guide inside of the symbol as well. So I'm going to undo that, press Escape. I'm going to drag a guide. depending how yours is. I'm dragging a guide. I'm going to do a, a, a horizontal and a vertical one. I guess the vertical one doesn't matter, but the horizontal one definitely matters. <coughs> so at this nexus right here, I'm going to make a selection. And I'm going to move it to the right. I'm going to make sure that this piece here is on the same level at the ending point as it was in the starting point. So I'm going to zoom out just to see it. I'm going to select that piece. I'm going to alt drag. with my arrow keys. See what I was saying here? If I was connecting these pieces simply by visualizing it, the problem is it's going to be too low. That should be up over here. So in my case, I definitely need this piece to be at this height. I need to redraw it slightly so that it touches. That's the essence of the loop animation. In a real animation, classic, traditional animation, they would have a piece of paper that was like as long as this desk, a piece this long, and then drawn perfectly at the beginning and at the end so that when they loop the paper, it looped in the animation. So I need to fix mine here. Maybe like dragging it something like this. It's probably going to look weird for a moment as I fix it up. I need to connect. Oh, well, there's the gap down there that I, that I didn't see. But I'm going to then connect all of this. Maybe just redraw it. That might be easier than trying to connect it. Depending how you drew it, I'm trying to join those two pieces. These things are not going to be viewed. They're outside of the canvas. But I need to join those lines, those lines, and fill in the color and delete the parts in the middle. It takes a little bit of setup. So with the paint bucket, I'll fill in the green. Get rid of these pieces. That, that might work depending on your image. Sometimes you have a kind of a background that that will work for. 
sometimes it, it won't, but that could be a way too. Copying it, flipping it, and then joining it. You still might need to massage the ending points a little bit so that they actually look seamless. That could be a way to go. So I did that looping, and then I'll have to fix a little bit the um, the actual animation also in the main timeline. Because a moment ago, I had set up the, the animation from here to there, but I didn't have this ending piece yet. This ending piece is still outside. I never view it. The, the ending piece is there. If you go back to scene one, it is there. But it should actually be visible so that then the next part is, is, is shown. Uh, so on the final keyframe, I can click the final keyframe and move my symbol a little more to the left so that that final part that I copied over from the beginning is visible. I still have to fix it just a little bit because I've got that weird spike. What I'm saying is I've, I've finished the end of the loop, but it's not actually showing in the timeline. So I can click the final frame, click the object, and then do shift arrows on the keyboard to move it over so that part of it appears on my screen. this concept of this looping takes, takes some setup. I'm still not quite happy with mine because what I need to do is add more of the background. So it's starting to loop and then it still seems to jump. Well you see that's because at a certain point uh, what's visible suddenly disappears to go back to the original. So I didn't select enough. I needed that little bit of the edge but I needed a little bit more of what was visible. So maybe about halfway. Uh, Dante, you're being a little distracting? So the this this whole part right here. Dante. Dante, you're being a little distracting. So the, the part that I need, you see there's a visibility to it, and I need to have more of that copied over. I just had a little piece. Just had this little piece over here. I need more of it copied over so that it actually loops. Back to the hills. One way to also kind of see what you're looking at, if you double click the hills in the, um, in the library, you only see this symbol. You don't see anything else. One way to see both is if you 
actually uh, double click the symbol in scene one. I'm still editing the symbol as evidence up here. I'm in the symbol in scene one, but now actually I can see the rest of the background. You see the difference if you double click the symbol when it's in scene one you will see the other elements too. If you double click the symbol inside of library, you will only see that symbol. So if you double click it on scene one, So the idea is that basically this kind of chunk, this kind of chunk, I need it also in the, at the end. This chunk that is visible, I need it at the end so that it can loop. Copied a little piece of it here. That didn't quite work as well. I'm going to need sort of like this piece. I'm going to give it a try this way. I can see how much of it it is selecting all the way up to here to approximately where it ends outside of the screen. This is the piece that I will alt-drag to the right, and then kind of connect it. So you can work on that for a moment. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we'll uh, play a little bit with, uh, with sound. If you have headphones, we're going to plug in your headphones to hear some sound. If you don't, we've got some headphones to check out. So let's take a break until 11.30. Either get your headphones or uh, check them out. And I've got, uh, we'll, we'll start to introduce a little bit of sound to this scene.